the seventh day of November 2022. I'm your host, Dana Durnford, I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org, and I hope everybody's had a reasonably good day, if that's possible anymore, except for the IAEA. Degenerate, I meant, sorry, Degenerate IAEA. We're mostly going to cover Fukushima stories from the last two years. A lot of great stories, by the way. And some stories from this week. Sellafield Limited in Japan proved value of continued cooperation. Continued cooperation. First off, that uh, plutonium from Sellafield is in the children, all of the children's teeth across the United Kingdom. Another thing about Sellafield, as you can see, it's surrounded by farms. And this place had a mixed oxide fuel meltdown that's still hemorrhaging radiation into the atmosphere and the ocean. Into the ocean is estimated around 8 million liters a day. They're the, last, the very last people that should be acting like snobs. Killer hot particles. Sellafield coastline, and you'll see this constantly where they'll, you know, the reactors close to the coastline is full of hot particles. But what about all the farms? Do, they really don't ever, under any circumstances, address what I just talked about. And if you eat at a supermarket, you should be terrified because almost all nuclear power plants will look like that surrounded by farms. That should literally terrify you that they're doing that. It's they're doing it to poison you. And to move the radiation away from the site through your food. It's disgusting. It's absolutely untenable. Sellafield has a long standing relationship with Fukushima Daiichi decontamination. They're the last people you want to let in at Fukushima Sellafield. There's literally not a single good person in the entire Sellafield history. Not a single person. Not one person would I consider a good person. An initial five-year cooperation agreement was signed by the two genocide machines in 2014. The agreement demonstrates the value of the international nuclear community. We, we got a poll about the nuclear community tonight. Is the pro-nuclear community evil and reckless? And we got a resounding 100% yes vote on it because that's obvious, Dana. Duh, Dana. During their time at Sellafield, representatives from... It's frightening that scum from Fukushima's went to Sellafield nuclear waste site. Witnessed the progress being made at the Magnox Swarf Storage Silo. Silo. <laughs> the word silo and nuclear shouldn't go together. And the pile fuel cladding silo. The pile fuel. First off, the decommissioned authority of the United Kingdom is bizarre. They've never decommissioned anything. And they got the arrogance to claim that they're a decommission authority. And visit our engineering center for excellence in West Columbia, where the cancer clusters, particularly the children, cancer clusters, which is just one of 1,800 illnesses, 
they were trying to blame it on the common flu, saying all the children got leukemia, not because of the multiple nuclear meltdowns alongside of them for decades hemorrhaging into their community. No, they got cancer clusters from the flu, Dana. Actual academic studies, peer review, claiming the flu is causing cancer clusters alongside of the disease factory known as Sellafield. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs per cubic meter in the California air. This is a catastrophic event from Japan. Fukushima release is so great the radioactive aerosols in Washington were 100,000 times what they call normal. There is no normal. Very high concentrations of hot particles. It, that never go away, including plutonium and americium. Xenon was at 450,000 times above detection levels after Fukushima in Washington. 450,000 times, and it persisted for weeks. <clears throat> so unless you can hold your breath for weeks, you got poisoned severely. And so did all the birds and mammals and animals and insects. All just in another day of genocide from the nuclear industry. So there's a study come out that really, really pissed me off. Radiation dose and gene expression analysts of wild boars 10 years after Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant why did they call it an accident when he built it in a tsunami zone and an earthquake zone, I wonder? Like I said, there's literally nobody good in the nuclear industry. Zero. Zilch. Nothing. Never found anybody with any redeeming qualities whatsoever in all these years. Ten years have elapsed since the earthquake. Much of the, well, the nuclear meltdowns never happened or something. Much of the area where people lived have been decontaminated, really. It's still melting down, scumbag, and humans are returning now. No, the, the, the victims, people that are complacent, are being tricked and deceived and manipulated, but nobody's returning because it's safe. They're being returned, so to speak, because they've been deceived nonstop by this despicable, cowardly industry known as nuclear. Recent research has revealed that numerous wildlife species, numerous wildlife species, are now abundant. Really, where did they go? Hunters in Fukushima have exterminated numerous wild animals. You know what they're talking about? They're talking about wild pigs. Numerous wild animals. So they, they, this is a study, right, where their whole intentions is to deceive you, manipulate you, and lie to you. I have nothing but the utmost contempt for academics after covering nuclear for so long. I have just nothing but complete disrespect, absolute horror of the international, worldwide nuclear community. They're actually just nothing but a bunch of diseases and garbage. There's not a single person there I would let inside my house, nothing. In a previous research that examined 213 wild boar mussels, Fukushima Prefecture, 98% of the samples had radioactivity concentrations that exceeded the standard value of 100 becquels a kilogram. 100 becquels a kilogram. <coughs> 11 becquels a kilogram was causing permanent heart damage to children, by the way. Let me explain about what 100 becquels actually mean.
Uh, here we go. Nuclear is disgusting. No matter how, once you comprehend what's really going on, it, you should be completely terrified. So, Hunter Beckwells, a kilogram is their standard. So, but what is 100 kilograms in the scope of a nuclear accident? Well, a curry is 37 billion Beckwells. 37 billion. I'm going to bring up the calculator in a second. So a gram of strontium-90 is 140 curries. So it's 140 times 37 billion. So let's just bring up the calculator because you've got to appreciate what a 100 Beckwells is in a single gram. In a single gram. So you got 140 curries. Let's bring in the calculator. You got 37 billion curries. And multiply it by 120 to get a gram. So divide that by 100. So a single gram can contaminate 44 billion pounds of uh, food. 44 billion. That's what a gram can contaminate. And when you talk about potassium-40 like bananas and equated with man-made, potassium is 71 ten millionths of a curry per gram versus a gram of strontium can contaminate 44 billion pounds of food. 44 billion. 44 billion. So a uh, uh, hundred Beckwells at a four trillion Beckwells is not much, is it? But that's enough to contaminate your food. So imagine millions of pounds atomizing and aerosoling into the environment. Wrap your mind around it. By the way, a hundred Beckwells a kilogram is is an extraordinary amount on top of that. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the best way. I'm trying to, trying to give you a way to look at it. It's extremely harmful. 11 Beckwells cause permanent uh, problems to children's hearts. So if that causes, and it does in the studies, cause incredible long-term damage to the heart of children, just 11 Beckwells a kilogram, what do you think that's going to do to the birds and mammals and animals and insects? It's catastrophic, see? But we're, we're only talking about a gram. These buildings were, had lost their entire inventory and they actually covered it up. They actually lied every facet of the way. They've never stopped lying for 80 years, by the way. The same lies for 80 years. Exceeds the standard of 100 Beckwells a kilogram. So a gram can contaminate 44 million or billion pounds of food. A gram. <clears throat> According to the degenerate scum nuclear industry. The, the revolting, worthless nuclear industry. They're, these people are worthless. They're the ones we should throw them right in on the melted reactors. These academics are worthless humans. They're worthless. And their children will be too. As a general fool, because they'll raise them to get the same jobs to, to screw over humanity and the species. As a general food, therefore, the meat of those wild boars are not edible and are discharted. But a gram can contaminate 44 billion pounds of food. A gram. And their numbers 
for safety are very, very high. When it's, you know, 11 Beckwells to Chernobyl, children had holes in their hearts from it. Muscles and small intestines were collected from the wild boars that were exterminated by the hunting association in the nuclear wasteland. And so these hunters should have never went into the nuclear wasteland. Again, this is why we got a poll tonight to help articulate that the nuclear industry is evil and reckless and is reckless on a global scale. I had 31 votes, almost 100% said yes, the pro-nuclear community is evil and reckless. But the people who done this study on the royal boar, they're, they're the definition of evil. They're the definition of scum. They're the definition of degenerates and mass murderers. They really are. They didn't do studies on all the species dying worldwide from Fukushima fallout. The worst wildlife die-off ever recorded anywhere on Earth is underway. We're facing the possibility of an extinction because of Fukushima. And from ground zero, they got the incredible hubris to put out a study like they've done on the wild boars. It just infuriates me. Absolutely, unequivocally, just amazes me that humans could be that kind of a scumbag, that kind of a degenerate. Very sick, very emaciated is the common theme when you look at the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean now. Mind-blowing die-off of seabirds. Every bird we're seeing is starving to death. Record numbers of deaths declared an unusual mortality event. You have an unusual mortality event for gray whales, an unusual mortality event for humpback whales, an unusual mortality event for rape whales, you got an unusual mortality event for killer whales, you got an unusual mortality event in the United Kingdom and the Atlantic for the beak whales, you got unusual mortality events for the birds and seals and sea lions and everything else. And these are directly related unequivocally to the radioactive fallout from the disgusting, despicable Japan, the revolting coward, the disgusting Japan. Severely emaciated. Countless dead birds reported in the Pacific off the U.S. coast. There's no seals, the fishing up there, all of them are starving. Too weak to fly, too weak to, sick and weak, too weak to run. All of them are starving. West Coast, alarm raised over the West Coast over unprecedented die-off and nearly endangered marine mammals. More are washed up in a few months in the combined recorded history. In the combined recorded history. Carts filled with emaciated dead bodies. You don't see the academics out there doing study on that, do you? You don't see them acknowledging any of that, do you? Because they're worthless and evil. Mysterious whale deaths in California. Continued trends of whales washing ashore, sick, starving, emaciated, too weak to swim, hemorrhaging. Sardines and crayfish disappeared from the Pacific Ocean. An extremely important feeder food for the marine life and migratory animals. They just vanished. No, they were slaughtered by the radiation. Marine mammals are starving. Larger than anything ever recorded on record. Animals basically dying on the beaches. They're... It's like walking skeleton. They're so hungry, they gone on the rocks. Maybe the fish have left. Yeah, really, they're gone on vacation, Dana. Extremely emaciated. Extremely emaciated. Killer whales dying along the Pacific coast. Sick and emaciated. 
Population's the lowest level in decades. No babies born in the past couple of years. The list just keeps going. Very sick, very emaciated. Marine birds disappearing in the Pacific Northwest. Significant ecological shift crashes in many species. Seals and sea lions starving to death. Everything's starving to death. And the nuclear industry will do everything they can to stab you in the back if you try to have a conversation. Everything they can to wreck you if you try to have a conversation. Everything they can to destroy you if you try to have a conversation. And they have an enormous amount of power and influence and control over your universities and your medias. It's a very, very lonely job that I have on top of that. Acute hemorrhaging found in dead owls along the west coast. Dead owls. Badly emaciated. And I'm not going to get through all of it. It's just too much. You can't actually keep up with it. Let's get on to the next story. Extinction threat for salmon, loss of sardines and squid, sea urchins and kelps, which I showed was symmetrical from Vancouver to Alaska year after year on the research expeditions. And what did I get for that? Arrested and attacked and smeared. And that was set up on by nothing but a bunch of cowards. I got a bunch of cowards attacking me, hiding away and attacking me. I don't hide away from anybody. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not ashamed of being honest. When you're honest, you don't hide away. We may be on the precipice of a major extinction event. That's caused by the nuclear industry. The degenerate, coward nuclear industry. It's not about a bunch of degenerates. Incredible degenerates. Speaking of degenerates, Man's Three Mile Island experience boost cleanup of Fukushima. There's, there's no such thing as how low can you stoop when it comes to the nuclear industry. They seem to break the mold every other day. My apologies if I'm slurping. A man's three-mile island experience boosts cleanup of Fukushima. So, like, it's trying to, like, trying to have a conversation with a lunatic. That's what the nuclear industry, everybody in the nuclear industry is the same way. It's, it's you're literally trying to have a conversation with a lunatic. And that'll do anything to destroy you if you question him on top of that. There's just shit for brains right there. The head of the Nuclear Regulation Authority Regional Office in Fukushima Prefecture walks in the radioactive waste management area to Fukushima. Somebody should kick the shit out of him every day or his parents for not drowning him when he was born. Comes across on an online ad... For a position with the government's newly established watchdog, the, the NRA in Japan was created the year after the nuclear meltdowns. And they were created to cover up the nuclear meltdown effects. Not to regulate the, the despicable industry. After the action, he felt a sense of duty. Really? Really? Do you really expect me to believe this? To contribute to the cleanup, given his two-year stink at Three Mile Island in Pennsylvania, which suffered a partial meltdown in 1979. I get so sick of their lies, I can barely contain it sometimes, and I apologize. But you try walking a mile in my shoes and see how it works for you. These are nothing but genocide machines. The, the people that work for the industry 
have an impeccable record of being scum and degenerate monsters. Three Mile Incident was the most severe in the history of U.S. commercial reactors. And, and that's a nice little trick to use there. It's the most severe in the history of U.S. commercial reactors, right? Which excludes things like Santa Susana. Santa Susana was built without a containment structure, for starters. Think, try wrapping your mind around that statement. They're, they were so lazy and so complacent and so used to being evil, they didn't even put a containment structure around the reactor itself, which meant you can't contain the radiation. It's, in, it's unbelievable. This is 1959, but they knew better. They knew now they were just going to blast the radiation into the environment by doing that. So any radiation vented out hot over the San Fernando Valley. The Department of Energy says we know there's a fuel meltdown. We don't know how much radiation, if any, was released. William Taylor. People like that should be slapped about 500 times every day until they don't exist anymore. According to an analyst of a five-year study by a panel of independent scientists convened after the incident, the event is more like it, the Santa Susana accident spit out, spit out. Think about the contempt to use that type of word, spit out. Up to 460 times the amount of radiation released from Three Mile Island which they admit contaminated over 2 million people, but then claimed that it was equal to watching colored television for another year. And the people that do that should be beaten every day for the rest of their lives. Back to that story. It was the most severe in the history of the U.S. commercial reactors, which is a blatant lie. It's an absolute deception to say it like that. It's an absolute dishonest and deceitful. And it matters. It actually matters. The study, he studied nuclear fusion. That doesn't even exist. I can barely contain my contempt. Before he joined a Japanese engineering company. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm doing all right. You've been uh, doing, doing some sampling? I, I, I have, yeah. I did uh, find some time in the past few days, you know, to do Just a let few me different things. Let, let me ex Hey, hang on there. Let me hang on. Let me explain to people so they know what's okay. going on here. So this is a friend of ours who's been calling in for years and years, and he uses a spectrometer to analyze food for cesium and americium. Am I right? Yes. Yep. So you got some samples you want to share with us? Go right ahead. It, it rained the other day. So I had the thing fired up, <laughs> and uh, I, I got. Uh, you know, hey, hang, hang on, just hang on. So, did you hear what he said, folks? It rained the other day, so I got samples. In other words, fear the yeah. rain. You know, go go ahead, my friend. The, the cesium per liter, uh, thirty two hundred and eighty three counts per minute per liter, and. 1,666, you know, and then some decimal points uh, of americium, 241. You know, so it's 4,949.99 uh, total between those two. Uh, you know, like I said in the past, I get anywhere from, you know, a few hundred or hundred to, uh, you know, the highest I've gotten is 14,000 over 14,000 counts per minute per liter. You know, it's different every time. And of course, amaurysium uh, for folks so, that are not aware decays to plutonium. 
Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned that last time. I got to mention it because um, people don't know any better, right? And plutonium's really bad if you need it. <laughs> so you got this in you, then it's decaying into that. You know, uh, they, you know, they like to say, oh, the half-life of this is this, these amount of years, and then it's gone. No, it decays into something yeah. worse, more poisonous, and that lasts longer. On top of that, yeah. Uh, on top of that, but a couple of things with, with food and that. Uh, I think as somebody was asking about uh, they might have they might have meant like rice aroni or something, and I I, I I happened to think after I said oh okay I'll try that but I can't mention a specific brand name. Sure. You know. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get offended. But go ahead. That. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. If you're eating. If you're eating, you're eating this stuff because it's in your food. If it's in the rain. It's the plants pick it up, whether you eat the plants or eat the cow that eat the plants. I tested milk again, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, grass-fed organic milk. You know, there's a bunch of different brands yeah. out there. And uh, this pretty close to what I found in the past. <clears throat> uh, between the two, 333, uh, you know, 216.3 was uh, the americium and then the cesium was like 116 and some change. So, uh, pineapple juice. Uh, yeah, I picked it up in pineapple juice. Nothing sick, uh, really. I did, yeah, I, I didn't find any americium, but I got, you know, 433 of the cesium. That's interesting. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. This is very interesting. Is when you're looking at it, and and then some gram flavored cereal, you know, that I like with my organic radioactive milk. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, two hundred and sixty six of the americium and another thirty three of the. Cesium, yeah, 266, the americium, and 33. It's still hemorrhaging out, too, see, out of Japan, yeah. right? And, and, I mean, it's coming from other places. It's coming from other places, too. It's not just Japan, unfortunately. All nuclear fuel pools are hemorrhaging this yeah. shit into the environment. Well, it, you know, those fuel pools uh, lie more on the ground, right? Yeah. They probably got picked up when the tsunami went back out into the ocean, grabbed up tons of that stuff, and now it just went out into the ocean. Who knows where that's sitting? The common, the, the they the actually ocean. they cemented a square mile in front of the plant under the ocean, right? Yeah. 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 Which, uh, and, which, you know, that might have helped uh, make things look good. That's you know, it's like chopping off your head and uh, putting giving it, you a cardboard body to put it on. <laughs> you know. I yeah, know the industry is so disgusting. Every f and there's no accountability. There's no one out. There's no like the NRC and the IAEA and Unclear and ERPA and blah blah blah. These are supposed to be checks and balances, but they're the opposite. They've never ever under any circumstances embarrass the industry let alone point it out in you know these types of uh yeah, it just this boggles the mind because the content this, i don't know if these people don't think it's gonna affect them but these people are literally Stupid. protecting their murderers the people that are murdering themselves and their friends everybody and families and loved ones and everybody else and all the species. Yeah. Yeah. So all of these people that give you a hard time are protecting the people that are murdering them. Now, I'm seeing the cancer and, and a lot of other things. And, uh, you know, I was expecting this years ago when I started finding this. It was kind of shocking because I knew what was going to happen as time went by. 
there's other things that are speeding this up too. You know, Mangala's meds uh, are, are amplifying this problem, but I'm losing family members. Uh, you know, I get around, I meet a lot of people in business and they're losing family members, uh, friends. Mm-hmm. At young ages, yeah, to and debilitating illnesses. So these people that are like uh, giving you a hard time, there's something that seriously the matter with them. You know, I don't know what they get paid. But that's uh, it, though. It, it's a paycheck, you know, see? It's just a paycheck, right? Yeah, it's just a paycheck. And instead of, like, getting every top engineer on planet Earth to, like, do something to slow it down, you're never going to stop it. You'd have to go out and find all those particles and pieces and fragments that blew out and are carried around the ocean. It'll just slow it down. There's already too much in the environment. Oh, our, yeah. our whole atmosphere is po- with this stuff. From the very upper uh, troposphere all the way to the ocean floor, yeah? So we're done. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm hoping to start doing oxygen tests sometime in the future. I don't know if it's in the near future or months or a year from now. But the, yeah, that's a good idea. We, we are, we are uh, seeing that. I've, I've covered quite a bit over the years. The decrease in oxygen worldwide because we're killing off the the oxygen production machine, right? Plankton. Phytoplankton. Plankton. Yeah, it's the biggest by yeah. uh, producer yeah. of oxygen. And, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I'm glad you call. I'm glad you do what you're doing, and I'm glad you call in, and because um, it's. You know, we're not getting evidence from the industry, obviously, right? It'll do everything it can to direct the truth. And so we need people like you doing what you're doing, my friend. Thank you. Go ahead. I Okay, yeah, I did get one verification. You know, I can't say who or where, but somebody in them places. So I've, all the stuff I've been finding, I'm not, you know, making this up. No, no. Yeah, no, well, you sent me the screen captures of the stuff uh, on a number of occasions, right? You can't make that stuff up. You oh. want to see it for yourself. Yeah. You know, you're on the West Coast, I'm on, you know, on the other end, but I know you went to the East Coast one time. Yeah. Um, but I told people that in the past, you know, about, the, about those necklaces you buy. Yeah. They, they say they keep up your cell phone radiation, and I got one. And I called the people selling that thing. I said, hey, you want to see these instruments and see your thing you're selling? Uh, Anyways, I don't want to tie your show up any longer. Well, like you say, uh, Um, thank you again. We're looking forward to the next time. Okay. I'll be around as long as I'm breathing. Yeah, well, we should be breathing. Yeah, we appreciate it. Keep up the yeah. great work, man. It's important, trust me. God bless. We'll see you right, next God time. Bless. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Folks, when you call in, remember you got to keep the phone close to your mouth. Otherwise, blah, 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 it breaks up on you. Well, that's not good news. Of course, that's what we're used to around here, unfortunately. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Richard, Dana. He studied nuclear fusion, this guy in the story here we're talking about. Back to that story. Before he joined a Japanese engineering company, he became involved in identifying exactly where and how much nuclear fuel remained in the pipes at the new U.S. nuke plant. And he managed radioactive waste there. He was a real good, useful idiot, this guy who works for Fukushima. He was assigned to the non-regulatory agency, which was created in 2012 after the nuclear meltdowns. And their job has been to cover up every facet of the accident that they can. He asked his subordinates 
him and his subordinates remain at the Fukushima plant around the clock on a rotation. Doing what? Telling the homeless where to go? These primary responsibilities is to verify whether workers involved in decommissioning follow government mandated procedures. The workers involved in the decommission are the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society and the immigrants who don't speak the language. And the expertise that he required at Three Mile Island is applicable to Fukushima to cover up. And he concedes that the decommissioning work in Fukushima is far more challenging than the U.S. He concedes. I like I can't handle the media at all anymore. They're they're just scum. That's all we get from the media is just degenerate scum for some reason. There's no one there with any integrity, not even a little tiny bit. Not even for like an accidental slip. Nothing. The contamination of the premises on the premises is pervasive and serious. And the volume of radioactive waste is on a scale several orders of magnitude higher than shitty Three Mile Island. And I only say that because in comparison to Fukushima, there is no comparison. Fukushima is huge reactors that are completely destroyed, lost their entire inventories. And... Uh, we're, we've been betrayed by every university has went to extremes to betray us, to absolute extremes to lie to us and try to deceive us, and they successfully have. Uh, I've been hot on their trail for so many years, I've lost track a very long time ago. They got handwritten on their stupid, stupid look and vest, NRA. Welcome to stupid. The world of stupid is called nuclear power. And these are uh, homicidal maniacs, everybody in it, for a paycheck, for a stupid paycheck. They're willing to slaughter everything all the time. Radiation still hitting flora and fauna in the forest in Fukushima. On a chilly night in February, he hauled a black plastic bag containing four macabre, which are monkeys, carcasses into his lab. The monkeys were killed at agricultural pest in a no-go zone. So why kill the animals in a no-go zone? Why do that to them? They're not, like, to call them agricultural pest would imply they're harvesting food which unfortunately is true, despite the fact no one lives there. The four dead macabres were given to Suzuki by farmers, farmers, who destroyed the animals several hours earlier in Nami. Nami is an absurd nuclear wasteland. In a town that lies about four kilometers from the crippled nuclear plant, crippled, crippled when I heard a word I just want to punch somebody in the nuclear industry out over and over does that look crippled to people does it look crippled or does it look destroyed that's the remains of reactor 4 this is the remains of reactor 3 does the remains of Reactor 3 look crippled to anybody? Is that an appropriate word, the word cripple, that the disgusting industry keeps using? Does reactor, the remains of Reactor 4 look like it's crippled to anybody? To call, to call it crippled, I can barely contain my anger sometimes. When I'm putting these presentations together, I w you know, if their phone number was there, I would call them up and give them what for. There's zero possibility I wouldn't. 
I think anybody that lies about this should have their head torn off, shoved up their arse. Parts of NAMI are still closed due to high radiation level parts. So why are you after killing the animals if it's closed to humans? Because of high radiation levels. Other victims used in the studies have come from off-limit areas, minima soma, which we see numbers there of 20 million becquels per kilogram. And they got kids moved back there. The disgusting, coward, vicious, hateful nuclear industry does. Background radiation levels most of the mountain forests, which you can't clean up, of course, and neighboring prefectures are higher than those in the residential areas, which have undergone decontamination procedures, which is where they send in the homeless, give them one-ton bags, and tell them to throw shit into it. It's just nothing but an industry of idiots and cowards and murderers. It's infested with murderers. In the nature-filled area that have been not been decontaminated, you can't decontaminate it. It's still melting down, for God's sakes. They only picked up one-ton bags in 3% of the prefecture, where they want farmers to farm and people to live so they can pretend that nuclear is not insidiously evil. In the nature of fill areas have not been decontaminated, and macabres continue to be exposed to radioactive material by feeding on polluted fruit and other food sources that have not been... So they're claiming that there's areas where it's safe in the middle of a nuclear wasteland. Look, it's impossible for me not to call them scumbags. It's impossible. And the reason we call this the Nuclear Scumbag Show is because that, that's what we deal with all day, every day, all night, every night, is these degenerate scum. And I got a lot better choice words, but you can't use it. And that's how we ended up with the Nuclear Scumbag Show. The average radioactivity levels in the thigh muscles is about 40,000 becquels per Macabre captured in NAMI in 2013. 2008, the figure was down to 20,000 Beckwells. And because the ones with the high doses died off right away. And we discovered no significant health hazards in the individual macabre studies, and they continue to display changes in their cells and organs. Again, the reason they're studying the macabre is because that's all that's left there. Everything else was killed off. Cesium. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cesium. 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 In other words, they're completely dishonest. They're completely disingenuous. And you'll see this almost every study where all they acknowledge is cesium, and they barely acknowledge that. As for the spiders, they're eating bugs that have high cesium levels because they feed on contaminated dead leaves mixed with contaminated soil. We ain't even got spiders here on the East Coast, only on buildings and structures and garbage cans and shovels. There's none in the forest. None. None. There's none. You can't have that without being completely poisoned. I think everybody in the nuclear industry, we've got to bring back burning people at the stakes and just burn every one of them alive, get rid of them, make an example out of them, use them as a deterrent so that the next nuclear scum degenerate monsters knows what's coming for them down the road. My apologies for being upset you're being murdered. Feel free to join me at some point. Cesium, 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 cesium. It's the equivalent of kicking you in the nuts every time 
you open your front door, there's somebody from the nuclear industry there kick you in the nuts and poison your, your tea and your soup and your children's food. That's the equivalent of cesium, 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 cesium. It's an insult to you. Not a single prefecture back to reuse of radioactive soil. Not a single prefecture in Japan. And these couple of stories coming up, <laughs> you, can't, you can't really explain it. You got to go through the story to, to show you how absolute insane these people actually are. The nuclear industry. There's not a single person in the nuclear industry that is I would call human. I don't. I've never come across and there's nobody worldwide in the nuclear industry that comes across as even subhuman. They're they're always just just evil. Just evil and reckless. Evil and reckless. They picked up 30 million to 60 million. Let's say 30 million. One ton bags. Now they're dumping it out. And spreading it out. In a no-go zone. Where now they're going to move people back into this area. Very contaminated soil. Which means it's going straight into the water tables. After it was transported to an interim storage facility. An interim storage facility doesn't mean you take your nuclear waste and dump it in the ground. For radioactive soil that straddles Akuma and Futaba, both of them are within two miles on each side of the ongoing multiple fuel pool meltdowns and reactor core meltdowns. You shouldn't be there let alone doing what they're doing. It's really difficult to understand when no one explains this stuff to you, so I do it all the time. A central government plan to reuse mountains of contaminated soil generated from land cleanup after the nuclear disaster got a muted response from other prefectures. The survey of the national prefectural governments with the exception of Fukushima, with the exception of Fukushima Prefecture, Mushiburi or, or um, what the hell, he just got elected for the third time. Uh, I just absolutely despise him. Found zero support for the reuse of contaminated dirt for farmland development. Reusing radioactive soil for farmland. Try making that up on your own. I dare you. Five governors, Yamagata, Yamashita, Nagasaki, uh, Koyoshima, Okinawa, flatly expressed opposition for any reuse, regardless of the projects the government have in mind. Governor of uh, Shitsuka opposed the reuse of radioactive dirt for farmland. Imagine you got a you you got one of your jobs is you, you have to you have to give the okay to reuse radioactive nuclear waste, which the stuff they were picking up was a hundred thousand beckles a kilogram. So it's a dirty bomb by the kilogram. For farmland development. What a governor Shiga refuses to contemplate his use for road construction. E e like evil is normal for the nuclear industry. They, did, they have a list of options. And they say, well, are the 10 options, which one is the most evil? And they say, well, you know, reusing it for farmland. Okay, let's do that. I'm not kidding you. That's how they actually work. Which is the worst option? Okay, well, let's do that. Well, we're the government. We can do whatever we want. The government is required by law to dispose of the polluted dirt by 2045. Polluted dirt. Dirty bombs. So let's use it for farmland. Because, hey, that's pretty evil. Only soil measuring up to 8,000 beckles per kilogram of cesium, the, which the reactors don't are not 
running on cesium or running on uranium and plutonium will be reused to ensure the annual radiation dose for exposures are too low to affect human health. Eight, uh, first off, 55 Beckwells was typically an evacuation zone. 55 per square meter. So 8,000 Beckwells per kilogram, you got to multiply it. What is it? 300 and something thousand. Let me multiply. So it's uh, 8,000. 8,000 times 64 to get a square meter. It's half a million Beckwells a square meter. And they're going to grow food in that and claim that, that that's okay. That won't affect human health. When a single atom sequesters in your body, your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells. So it unequivocally affects you. Because now you have less red blood cells in your body permanently. Which, as you consume more of this evilness, then your body is producing more white blood cells than red blood cells. There's an instant and permanent reaction to it. It's just a, it's an evil, disgusting, cowardly industry. And that's why we got a poll tonight. Is the pro-nuclear community evil and reckless? I think it should be backwards, reckless and evil. But it's unequivocal. It's unequivocal. 51 votes, 98% of the people said, yeah, Dana, unfortunately, they're evil and reckless. And just consider how pathetic it is that that's, how, that's what they're like as humans. They're evil and reckless. They're probably asked, never mind, I can get pretty nasty sometimes. The volume of polluted soil to be gathered at the facility is expected to reach 14 million cubic meters. 14 million cubic meters just in the one facility where they're dumping it and going to grow food in it. As the next story will tell you, Ministry tests grown veggies on cleansed soil. You can't clean radiation from soil. That story is coming up right away. Central government plans to use 80% of the overall radioactive bags stored there after concluding it was unrealistic to expect to dispose of all the radiation. It's unrealistic for the nuclear industry to get rid of the radiation pollution that they've already gathered up in one ton bags, tens of millions. It was unrealistic to expect them to dispose of it. It's unrealistic. So let's grow food in it. It is promoting the reuse of radio, relatively low-level radioactive dirt for farmland. Why would you do something like that? You disgusting maggots. You revolting maggots. Japan shouldn't be allowed to ship food out of their country. Any ships that are shipping food out of there should be shot and sunk immediately. It's outrageous. It's not tenable. It's idiotic. I apologize for giving this shit. That makes me look like a bad person, I know. And you poor bastards out there that care, that makes you look like a monster, because you care. Why do you care? You're hurting the nuclear industry, Dana. It was unrealistic to expect to dispose of all the dirt. It's unrealistic to expect us not to cut your throat if we ever find any of you disgusting maggots. When asked in the survey if the prefecture may become the final disposal site, Eight governors rejected the idea outright, despite the fact that the government will do what the nuclear industry will do whatever it feels like. It doesn't give a shit what you think. 
It only cares about killing you and poisoning your children and all the species. It's all it's interested in. And there's no way to deny that statement. The remaining governors said either they cannot answer or refuse to take a stand. They cannot answer or refuse to take a stand, but they won't take the dirt. <laughs> the ministry to test grown vegetables and cleanse the soil in Fukushima. If you tried it in Canada or United States or any other country with half a brain cell, the, the population would skin these people alive, which is appropriate, by the way. In fact, anybody who wants to join the nuclear industry should be skinned alive on site. That's appropriate, because I can guarantee you they'll do everything they can to murder you over the long term, and they're very good at it. Environment Minister. The Environment Minister. The Environment Minister wants to grow vegetables in the radioactive one-ton bags. The Environment Minister. So what is their job? Their job is to murder you, destroy your future, destroy humanity. These are, these are not worthy of pity. These are not worthy of mercy. They have no mercy for you and your children and your loved ones or your planet. None. Nothing. Environment Minister inspects a test project on reusing soil... Decontaminate. You can't decontaminate soil following a nuclear accident on farmland in Illidiot in Fukushima Prefecture. Look how friggin' normal they look. Isn't that the scariest thing you ever saw? They actually look like normal people, but they're not normal, are they? There's nothing normal about what they want to do. It's just, how can the world sit in silence? How does that actually work? Despite strong opposition to the proposal, the environment minister was... So, despite strong public opposition, the environmental ministry will soon start a trial demonstration to confirm the safety of growing food crops in soil from the nuclear meltdowns. They received 3,000 public comments which called them scumbags and monsters and still didn't change their mind. Most of which opposed the project. And, and who the frig would agree with the project to grow food in one-ton bags of radiation fallout. Many people are opposed to reusing the soil, saying it will spread contamination. The Environment Minister acknowledged, I strongly recognize the fact there are people opposing the reuse of decontaminated soil. How did that even become an option? How does... How did you ever, this planet ever get to the point where they felt that that was an option? How many failures did the IAEA and UNSCLEAR and IRPA and every university in the entire planet failed for them to do that? They recognized there's people who oppose. Yeah, because they're actually people unlike you. You're not a people. You're not a human. You're, you're a disgusting parasite. You're a mass murderer. The project to start at the end of May at the earliest will be conducted in Lydiat, Fukushima Prefecture, in a nuclear difficult-to-return zone where the radiation remains high. So they're growing food for sale in a no-go zone with soil from a nuclear wasteland. Yeah? Try making that up on your own. Try wrapping your mind around that this story is actually real. Try wrapping your mind around that Harvard University and Yale University and Stanford University and Oxford University and MIT University and every other university on the planet okayed it. 
Oh, yeah, that's just great grow food, isn't it? <laughs> you coming to cocktails tonight? Triple meltdown. Tripled. You had eight, eight fuel pools meltdown. Eight fuel pools. And four reactors. There were Number four, they won't even acknowledge you melt it down. When you're changing fuel, you only change a fraction of the fuel. You know, a good fraction, but just a fraction. You're not changing all the fuel. You're not taking it all out of the reactor. Unless you're doing a complete refit, you're only taking out a percentage of the fuel. It melted down. And all the fuel pools melted down. If we had a referendum, should we hang everybody in the nuclear industry? It would be 100% yes. Does, this is the remains of a 190-foot building, Reactor 4 to your left. Does that look like it's, it's intact to anybody? Is there anybody kooky enough on the planet that think that besides the industry, here's the industry pretending they're in the fuel pool. We are here inside Reactor 4 at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was severely crippled during the earthquake and tsunami of 2011, leading to the country's worst nuclear disaster. I like to kick the shit out of her so bad, man. Faking being in a fuel pool that doesn't even exist. She should get life in jail for it, minimum. And the producers and the videographers and the people who own CNN and published it. But all the media done it. ABC done it. CBS done it. CBC in Canada done it. ABC in Australia done it. Every media out there told the same lie. Because it's harmless, see? Or that's to cover up because it's lethal. The ministry is seeking to reuse decontaminated soil that you can't decontaminate for public construction and farmland development. The district is designated as a difficult to return zone where radiation levels remain high. They're going to bring in radioactive fallout, spread it out in a, in a radioactive wasteland and grow food in it. Tell me how, how the fuck did we ever get to that? How did, I mean, my apologies, how the hell did we ever get to that point where something like that could happen? How the frig did we ever get to this stage in, in humanity? Because humanity obviously doesn't exist anymore. There's this little small group of us. That's it. That says, wait a second. The ministry initially planned to revise the related ordinance in April to enable the soil to be reused. Because up to that point, it was illegal to murder everybody. Saying obtained results to show the soil was safe enough to be used for growing crops. Yeah, who, who, who gave those okays? Who done the study and said it was okay? Because I want to stick a ice pick down the top of their head. And everybody else on the planet should too. The ministry decided, because what are you supposed to do if the system won't deal with it? You got to deal it with yourself. And if you don't, you're going to be murdered. And your loved ones and your children and your friends and your families and your pets and your communities are being slaughtered by this disease factory known as the nuclear industry. This disgusting... Now, I'm not a fucking hateful person. They've made me this way with, with their madness, with their incredible madness. I'm, I'm not a person that has used strong language like I'm using tonight. I'm doing that out of, because of pure... This is madness to even suggest it. It's like something from The Onion. It seems inconceivable. The ministry is considering reusing the soil to reduce the amount of the soil that needs to be disposed of. So it's better to dispose of you than it is of the soil. If they're so worthless and reckless, they're willing to do that, what else do you really think they're willing to do? 
There's no limit. Fukushima reactors are sitting on shaky base, raises quake concerns. You're talking about a million pounds are sitting on little pieces of steel. The story is claiming that the reactors are intact. This is ludicrous assertions. The heavy damage structure to Fukushima number no. one nuclear power plant may be too flimsy to withstand another major earthquake. Photos taken by a remote control robotic device sent in the number no. one reactor found a large portion of the cement base supporting the pressure vessels appeared to have melted, leaving only a metal framework holding up the pressure vessels. And that Noting that a large portion of this concrete base only has the metal framework remaining. The Nuclear Regulation Authority, which was created the year after, we remain concerned about whether it would stand a strong quake. So the number one reactor caused most of the fuel to melt through the bottom of the pressure vessel. It burnt constantly for days. It's 100% lost, and whatever remained didn't burn off, because number one detonated, right? Now, number one was a huge detonation. A picture here somewhere. So this building detonated. The fuel pools were at the very top of the building. They burned and blew up and blew up and caught fire. They lost a lot of their inventory, but a lot of it, now because it's burning at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, went down through the building. It, it'll take out everything in its way, including the reactor. They're gone. The remains of that has probably gone China syndrome with reactor too. And I'm only using the word China syndrome to try to describe the fact that it's gone deep into the earth at a very high temperatures where it's cannibalizing steel and rebar on the way through, and then rocks and gravel and dirt. And it atomizes and aerosols and ionizes and rates, it radiates everything and releases invisible plumes. And that's going to go on for millions of years because nobody will try to deal with it. It support the pressure vessel, which weighed 440 tons, which is almost a million pounds. So they're claiming a million pounds is being held up by pieces of metal. But the reality of it is the infrastructure is completely gone. That's the cover story that I'm reading to you there. It's particularly worrisome that in light of the fact the quakes with a seismic intensity of upper six and Japan's seismic intensity scale of seven, upper six, which they've had quite a few off the coastline in 2021 and 2022. These are equal to nine plus earthquakes on the Richter scale. In the worst case scenario, another strong quake could cause the pressure vessel to topple over, making work to remove the melted fuel more difficult. So they're setting the cover story. The, the building is completely gutted on the inside from 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. They put a Kevlar sarcophagus around this for five years straight. Then the Kevlar, if you took out a square foot of the Kevlar, chopped it out, took it to your at a subway station, everybody who walked past it for thousands of years would die that week or that day. The, the industry is disgusting. There's not, there's not a single person in the industry that if I had an option to save an insect or somebody in the nuclear industry, I would save the insect every time. There's not a single person in the nuclear industry that is worthy of human saving. There's not, not one. Zero. The industry is nothing but incredible despicable cowards 
Evacuation orders be lifted even before the radiation is purged. You can't purge the radiation. And this is what I mean. The industry is disgusting. Here they are dumping their bags and leveling it out so they can grow food in it later. Being evil is the norm in the nuclear industry. The government is planning to create new rules to allow the lifting of evacuation orders in a nuclear wasteland before they are decontaminated. You can't decontaminate a nuclear wasteland. This is not rocket science, for God's sakes. Thank goodness, because the nuclear industry would be screwed if this was actually difficult. It's easy to be evil. That's one thing we learned from the nuclear industry a long time ago. The, the most evil option, that's what they're going to choose every time. They're completely out of control. Your universities are pointless. It's better to burn down every university and start from scratch and never allow the people in the universities that are teaching to ever be in a school again or anybody related to them as a tent cousin removed. Never let anything like that in your universities again. That's the only hope you got as a planet if you want a future. The move comes in response to requests by the local municipal municipalities in Fukushima. So the, the Fukushima prefecture wants the restrictions lifted before they even pick up one ton bags of radiation. Where annual airborne radiation at 20,000 microsieverts. And I might consider a microsiever, and I'm going to downplay the numbers. So consider 20,000 microsieverts. Multiply it by 150. Beckwells per microsiever. That's very, very low numbers we're talking about. So they're saying the airborne radiation is at over 3 million Beckwells in the air. Is acceptable to let people go in there and breathe that in all day and all night. Particularly the children, of course, because that's what the nuclear industry is. It's a coward industry that's, that this planet needs to rein in. So how much did you screw me over on my video last night, I wonder? Uh, one hour, 56 minutes, 43 seconds, 43 seconds. So 43 seconds, 53 seconds, and so 13 seconds longer. My video last night is 13 seconds longer. Exactly 12 hours later, my videos get longer. New problem at the Fukushima site, sandbags found to be radioactive. New problem at Fukushima. This was the incinerator. And again, this is a bullshit story where they claimed immediately after the accident, they were collecting the water and they were putting it in the basement to store it. This, this is the official story, by the way. I know what you're saying. No, there's nobody that batshit crazy, Dana. Well, yes, the nuclear industry is. Sandbags sunk in the basement of a high temperature incineration incinerator building. First off, did you know every nuclear power plant got an incinerator? So they can, they're legally allowed to burn certain amounts of radiation, which they only acknowledge as cesium, so nothing else has a restriction, only cesium. So they can burn all the uranium, plutonium, and everything else they want. You tell me it's not evil, then you're not paying attention. TEPCO is struggling to find ways to safely remove 26 tons of sandbags in the basement of two buildings near number one and number three reactor. 
We're a triple, again, triple meltdown, which is a ludicrous assertion. There's four of them for sure and eight fuel pools that melted down. Are emitting radi radiation levels of three to four sieverts per hour. This is a lethal dose. You'll die within a couple of weeks of that exposure. What do they claim? Which would kill half the people exposed for an entire hour. And the other half will die a couple hours later. Just walking past it, you're going to die within a couple of weeks. Now, the three to four sievers, you're talking about per bag. And the time are 26 tons of bags. So first off, soon after nuclear crisis, TEPCO used the two buildings as substitutes for tanks to temporarily store a huge volume of heavily contaminated water. If you go to my playlist, you'll see two different types of videos, playlists, about pictures from Japan. One was 1,900 pictures, and another was 736 pictures. And they're claiming that they stoically went in there immediately and start grabbing all the water and storing it in the basements. Um, like, if somebody actually said that to me in person, I kicked the shit out of them, because that's what they deserve. It's a ludicrous absolutely nutty statement to suggest that they were collecting the water and putting it in a basement. Interest in the sunken sandbags waned as the years passed and the issue surfaced again in 2018 when TEPCO measured raid TEPCO. TEPCO, that was nationalized right away. Doesn't even exist. Measured radiation levels in the two buildings' basements in preparation for moving the radioactive water there. That they allegedly put there because they're stoic. And then look at the word cesium again. That's why we made baseball bats for these people, you know that? Not for baseball, but for their fucking heads. Cesium concentrations of about 130 million becquels per gram. Per gram. <laughs> cesium. When you hear the word cesium, that's them trying to kick you in the nuts. That's them spitting on your children's coffins. The, the entire nuclear industry is just gobblish. There's, just, there's no good in nuclear. There's nothing, no redeeming qualities in nuclear industry, period. There's, no, there's nobody in the nuclear industry that has attributes of a human. There's, there's nothing. Uh, well, I made it this far without honk, honk. If it doesn't have countermeasures in place when the water is released or highly radioactive sandbags will be exposed to air. You should take everybody in the nuclear industry and stuff them in that basement until they, they die. And then use like a big meat hook to take them out and drop them on the reactors after. <laughs> I'm being nice. I'm actually being a nice, believe it or not. I prefer to run everybody in the nuclear industry over with those big rollers to use to flatten out the highways when they're putting down new highways alive. They, the whole nuclear industry should be exterminated. It's, it's nothing but evilness on, on a lethal level for every species worldwide. Lethal radiation levels detected in Fukushima nuclear plant Reactor lids. I can barely contain my anger. I cover these stories. I apologize for, for not being able to slaughter all of these scumbags. The Nuclear Regulation Authority said the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Right? The minute you give them the word authority attached to their uh, moniker, they're like some sick and demented and hideous and odious and twisted disease monsters. 
that a radiation reading near the surface of the lid of the number two reactor. Number two burnt constantly for days. There's zero zilch possibility that they went in and done readings. It's not even a robot. It's zero possibility. There's zero possibility there's any fuel pool or reactor core left in the building. It's zero. And that's what the industry does. It just makes shit up. There's no rhythm to it outside of how do we lie to the population about this? How do we lie to the population about that? How do we misrepresent everything about this? The shield plug consisting of three lids placed on top of each other to block the extremely high radiation emanating from the reactor core that doesn't exist anymore. And each lid weighs 150 tons. There's three of them. There is no reactor core in building two. There's no reactor fuel pools in building two. They're completely gone. It's a worthless industry that the entire world should be trying to exterminate before you get exterminated. They are doing everything they can to exterminate you and your loved ones and everybody else on the planet. That's all they're doing. They're, they're a worthless society on top of that. One radiation reading of 1.2 sieverts, four centimeters down from the surface in a hole in the center of the lid. I can barely contain the anger here. We might just have to move on. The non-regulatory agencies estimate the dose from the contaminated source. Can you imagine what kind of friggin' scumbag these people actually are in real life? Can you imagine what kind of worthless, degenerate sacks of shit they are in real life? I can. <laughs> I'm sick of their I'm sick of their genocide. You should be too. How come you're not sick of this genocide, this mass murder machine? How's everybody doing here tonight? I got to change gears because I'm really starting to get upset. And when I get upset, I'll say shit that I know I shouldn't be saying. Because it's not healthy, right? Uh, but, you know, we were being murdered worldwide. Uh, we can't even go to our supermarkets without being fucking scared shitless all the time. Because this industry has done everything it can to murder everything. Hi, Colette. How are you? Locations where high levels of radiation were detected. Look at the picture they're showing you. They're claiming this is reactor two. They're such evil. Yeah, I must have got it. it uh, Colette, I just checked before I went live tonight. And it's saying it'll be in my account tomorrow. It was just unusual that it didn't give me the option to directly deposit it, which is normally that's the option it gives me. And so I, I, I never seen that before. I have to worry about it, right? It lo everything looks good on my end. It looks like it's going to go through tomorrow. I'll check tomorrow just to make sure, right? Because I worry about this industry, we've never had an issue with 
donations. We've never had a single issue. The only issues that were were stuff that I perceived that give me some pause for concern, but it's it's never actually been an issue, and I just don't, you know, I'm I worry about people that the industry could infiltrate it, which is, I'm just being overly cautious because I when I see things that I hadn't seen before, that stuff worries me, right? And it happened with uh, Stephen Young a couple of weeks ago. That turned out to be a mistake on my part. And I got no idea how I made the mistake even when I look back at it, but I did make that mistake for sure, right? And I think it's just because I've been sick for a couple of weeks and I'm not I'm not on my game like I normally am. Normally, I, I'm, one, one thing most people will know about me is details are everything. And, of course, details are the most difficult thing to, to pay attention to all the time, right? But that's where we get all the, the important information is in details. It's the same with the research expeditions. It's about it's incredibly about the details. And so I repeated the expeditions year after year to make sure that I wasn't making a mistake. And unfortunately, I wasn't making a mistake. And we have an extinction event playing out. But the, only because... Uh, I understand the importance of the details. The details, and in order to tell the story, I constantly have to go deep, deep, deep into the details to make sure there's no way to misrepresent or misinterpret the things I'm talking about. And, I, and so today I feel a lot better. I'm, not, I'm still not 100%. In fact, I wasn't even going to do a show tonight because I don't feel that good. But I, here I am doing a show and... I'm still a little upset with the industry. Remoisturize the brain. <laughs> That's exactly right. Let's finish up this uh, show tonight, if that's possible. Radioactive cesium. In, and so they're saying the radiation at the top of the reactor is <laughs> cesium. The minute you hear the word cesium and nuclear meltdowns, it means they're trying to stab you to death. It's a worthless industry. There's no redeeming qualities in this industry. Again, you're talking about the lids where it's going to be hundreds of thousands of sieverts, and they're talking about cesium of all things. I was trying to make some sense of the video that they posted. They're pretending they're walking in, in this picture here, which hopefully the I, I redone this a few times, where they're pretending they're walking in the reactor two. And now they're pretending they're in the top of the reactor two. I actually got the video there. I'll bring it up in a second here. These are crazies to suggest that they're walking in the reactor two. And they got all these pointless, stupid pictures to try to convince those that are complacent, that they're walking in the reactor too. I'm going to play that video in a second because the screen captures. This is the alleged top of reactor two, where they're claiming the lid is perfect. Look at the lid. I'm going to play the video in a second. But they're claiming this is the lid right here. Look, and look at the damage right here. How can there be everything be perfect right here? Because that's Photoshop is what they got right there. And then everything is completely melted and destroyed right here. This is the elevator shaft where they normally, from way above here, they would lower fuel down through. The nuclear industry is an absolute worthless industry. The people in it are just hideous scum. Let me grab the video here. It won't take me long to find it. That's the interesting thing about nuclear. You can count on them to be degenerate scum. That's a given. You can guarantee it to a stranger. They're going to be, oh, there it is. 
that they're going to be degenerate scum. We'll get there. Bear with me. They're pretending they're walking in the reactor too. Pretending they're inside the reactor too. Just watch this again where they're walking up the steps. First off, they're wearing uh, paper suits. TEPCO says they burn 7,000 of these paper suits each day. I think that's amazing where they pretend they're walking up into Reactor 2. <laughs> There's zero possibility of doing it and surviving it. And that they're going to put a plastic bag over his head and everything is going to be hunky-dory. Dangerously high levels of radiation contamination at two of the three reactors. Again... It's an Olympic for lawyers, this is what the nuclear industry is. Pretending that the lid is intact and that cesium is what they're worried about from multiple nuclear meltdowns and just tons and tons and tons of fuel melted and exploded and detonated and atomized and aerosol. I can barely keep up. Memories and rebuilding in the Fukushima town of Futaba. This is a $50 million museum, this story. You remember James Lucid called in a few weeks ago about this building, right? And he was frustrated with the, with the bullshit and lies. The town of Futaba, which is two kilometers north of the multiple nuclear ongoing meltdowns. Two kilometers. is home to the Great East Japan Earthquake and Nuclear Disaster Memorial Museum. $50 million to build a museum less than two kilometers from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns in a no-go zone. They actually done that. It didn't, it didn't cost $50 million. They had to pay uh, $40 million of it be allowed to steal it in order to build it and a memorial museum evacuation orders lifted a lighting at the J.R. Futabar train station in September found a reconstruction of the area has made considerable headways including a public housing project to the west of the station in a nuclear wasteland right alongside of multiple nuclear meltdowns and the newly built Futaba town office. And they, like the government doesn't live there. They built the office. But they, don't, they don't work there. They don't live there. It's, it's strictly about posturing. Government lifted evacuation orders August the 30th, two months ago, 2022, for the designated reconstruction district centered around Futaba train station. The idea of the train station was they can bring the homeless and destitute in on the trains. They can walk, get a bus, rather, to the nuclear meltdown site. There's no nuclear scientists who have ever visited the site, let alone the museum. The town offices, which are located in the nearby city of Iwaki, reopened in a new building in September of this year. Construction of 25-unit public housing facility, 25 apartments along the west side of the station is complete and residents began moving back in October, 11 years after, to a nuclear wasteland. It just shows you how absurdly evil this industry is, how worthless this industry is. And he built it of natural wood in multiple ongoing nuclear meltdowns, which means it's going to be contaminated immediately and permanently. 
They're also accessible by the shuttle bus from Futabar train station or by bicycle. They actually got a bicycle sharing program there. You can go there and ride around in a nuclear wasteland on a bicycle because Japan is nothing but a bunch of worthless people. Harmful rumor lands. <laughs> Reliable through a locally run free public bike sharing system where you got to make a deposit and you get it back when you bring the bike back. In a nuclear wasteland. Has been open since autumn of 2020 to serve visitors and students. Imagine sending students into a nuclear wasteland to pretend that the nuclear industry uh, is not as evil as it actually is. Imagine what kind of sickness you got to be to do that. Imagine what kind of contempt you got to be, have to promote students going into the nuclear wasteland. Imagine what kind of degenerate piece of shit you actually got to be to do that. Imagine what kind of freak in nature the police are for not putting a stop to it. And student groups. Nothing says stupid at the quite like nuclear. The power plant where decommissioning work continues straddles the town of Futabar and Akuma, Unit 5 and 6 are on the Futabar side, why, which was speared the hydrogen, which is caused by the meltdown, explosion, and the devastated Unit 1 to 4 on the Akuma side, which is no different, it's a nuclear meltdown. It doesn't matter which side, John, you're, you're on massive, absurd amount of radiation all the time, hemorrhaging from these disease factories. It also has a conference room for symposium or workshops in a nuclear wasteland. Yeah, let's, let's have our conference and symposium right up there alongside of multiple nuclear meltdowns because we're stupid. You see the reactors in the background, the stacks that are 25 sieverts an hour at the base, by the way, of these stacks. But the nuclear meltdowns are okay. They're only a couple of us. Uh, bit of cesium, Dana. Uh-huh. One ton bags. I can barely contain my, my disgust for this industry. Well, I can't. That's the terrible part, in one sense, for me as a human, is I can't contain my disgust of everybody in the nuclear industry. You really, really, you know, you have to appreciate I was at this line before Fukushima happened. I only became public because of Fukushima. The museum exhibits are also regularly rotated and updated, making repeated visits worthwhile. So the, the museum has 250,000 uh, uh, exhibits stored on site, 250, quarter million. But the records from the communities of the volunteers after the meltdowns, they burnt them. I just can't stand genocide. This drives me right over the deep end. It's, it's a good laugh, though. Try wrapping your mind around this madness. Paper suits. <laughs> they burned 7,000 of these, they allegedly, each day. Which, they don't have 7,000 people there each day, folks. They got one-ton bags. And what do they got over there? What do you think that is over there? It's a pressure washer. It's not even a gas pressure washer. It's one of those shitty electric pressure washers. This is how they claim their decontaminated area. They're using a pressure washer in a nuclear wasteland and calling it decontaminated. Only the Japanese could actually be that stupid. And they're, like, it says Tyvek, right? But we've got the headlines of TEPCO saying they burned 7,000 paper suits a day. 
the Tyvex are strictly for uh, posturing. The rubber boots, everything about it makes me sick to my guts. They picked up over 30 million of the bags and then they want to grow food in it. In a no-go zone on top of that. Exhibits at the museum. Exhibits. Going, you're two kilometers from multiple nuclear meltdowns and they're offering you bicycles to go on tours. The industry is completely out of control. And the entire nuclear industry worldwide loves every, every inch of this. Food bar business incubation. So they have a food bar right alongside of multiple ongoing nuclear meltdowns that will never be cleaned up. And they have business incubations there. Try to encourage people to come into a nuclear wasteland. Two point one trillion yen just came out today spent so far on Fukushima nuclear disaster. Two point one trillion yen. Which is equal to eighty two billion dollars. They estimated the, the actual estimate that we've seen over the years was they already spent seven hundred billion on us. As they claim they only spent eighty two billion now. This is typical of this piece of shit industry, isn't it? Means more than half the government's total estimate of 21 trillion yen, including compensation payments and reactor decommissioning expenses, has been used in 11 years. And this gets really interesting. This is the last story, or the second last story. Expenses for damages. Decontamination activities, work and activities related to temporary storage facilities are categorized as compensation costs. So, so damages, decontamination work, activities for temporary storage facilities where they're going to grow food in it now is considered compensation costs. With money borrowed from financial institutes or through other means and the debts are paid back by penalizing the power companies across Japan. The power companies across Japan, not TEPCO or the government, is paying for Fukushima, folks. The ultimate betrayal. And this figure doesn't include projected damages to compensate businesses and others for reputational damage, reputational damage. Every time I hear that word, that they're talking about reputational damage in a nuclear wasteland, it's just nothing but contempt. It's just nothing but contempt. Caused by the treated water being discharged into the sea, which is an absurd, it's an absurd lie to suggest they're treating water after pouring it over the melted reactor cores. They have no way of recovering it. The, the industry is not worthy of existing another second on this planet. There's not a single person in the nuclear industry that comes across as human. Also, seven court rulings have ordered the government and TEPCO to pay damages. They're not paying damages. You've already seen who pays the damage is the electrical companies across Japan. Not TEPCO, not the government, which is the, the rate payers. Pay damage to those who fled the disaster more than the figures recommended in the interim guidelines published by the monsters known as the Dispute Reconciliation and Committee for the Nuclear Damage Compensation. The committee was established within the Ministry of Education, Cultural, Sports, Sports, Sports and worthless science and technology. Sports. Damages from reputational damage. TEPCO pays for all nuclear decommissioning work. What are you, schizophrenic or something? 
The government pays the compensation with money borrowed, and the debts are paid back using revenue from electricity companies across Japan collected through electricity bills or tax revenues. They can't even keep their laws straight in the same story. TEPCO pays for all nuclear decommissioning work, which is obviously an incredible misrepresentation in law. The breakdown in the cost in Erie for 11 years after the accident is 195 billion yen for removing nuclear fuel from the spent fuel pools. You just want to go over and grab somebody from the nuclear industry and break their friggin' neck. Here's one of the buildings. The fuel pools are at the top of it. They're claiming they spent 195 billion yen getting fuel out of a pool that don't even exist. Why aren't you angry? Because it's not healthy for you, Dana. 195 billion they stole for removing fuel from the spent fuel pools that don't even exist. So they stole $2 billion Canadian, basically, for that scam. They claimed $182 billion for dealing with the contaminated water and treated water, which is another $1.7 billion Canadian scam. And $37 billion for removing melted fuel debris from the nuclear reactors which is another 340 million Canadian scam, because they didn't do any of it. Nothing. There's around $5 billion Canadian that they absolutely unequivocally, positively didn't do. But they claim they'd get fuel out of a pool that didn't exist. In fact, TEPCO abandoned the planned removal work this year because the robotic arm used for the tasks have been developed, hasn't been developed as quickly as predicted. They're talking about a robotic arm from the United Kingdom, from the degenerates at Sellerfield, which was designed to take samples, not remove the fuel, but to take samples. It was a robotic arm with a little manipulator on the top of it that doesn't close or open or anything, which is meant to scoop up a bit of fuel. It's zilch. It's zero possibility that it would be used to remove the fuel. Zero. They, and they changed the story and claimed that the arm is now going to be used for taking the fuel out of the reactors. TEPCO has saved funds, TEPCO. Now they're claiming TEPCO saved up money each year This is absurdness. The last of the last the last the very last one of the night, thank God this madness is over. <laughs> Expenses for damages, decontamination work, and activities related to temporary storage facilities are categorized as compensation. In other words, they're perpetual liars and murderers. That's the nuclear industry. Perpetual scum. That's the nuclear industry. The government pays the compensation costs with money borrowed from financial institutes, and the debts are paid back using revenue from electricity companies across the country, collected through electricity bills. But that's the nuclear industry. In the same friggin' paragraph, they can't help but lie and misrepresent every facet of it. That's the nuclear industry. I'll take frig this day is over. that's the sad part of what I do is I have to put all this together so I'm screaming the whole time and then at night time I gotta sit there for two hours and try not to scream <laughs> good luck on that good luck on that I dare anybody to do what I'm doing and not be screaming at the end of it <laughs> I really do right 
How do you not scream in frustration when all day long you wallow in this excrement? How does that actually work? And the problem is, I have to do what I'm doing. And I apologize because I kind of wig out sometimes. I know it's not appropriate. My voice is raw at this stage, thank God. The show is already over now. But the pain will go on for at least another couple of hours. It'll take me at least another two or three hours to calm down. So it's like almost midnight right now. It'll be around 3 a.m. in the morning before I calm down enough that I can actually sleep. Hopefully. Because like when i done the research expeditions, I can't deny that. I can't pretend that didn't happen. I can't pretend it's not an extinction event. I can't. It's Groundhog's Day for me every single day. How did we do tonight? On the poll, let's get back to the poll. Maybe that'll cheer me up. Oh, that cheered me up. We got 72 votes. Is the pro-nuclear scum degenerate monstrous evil and reckless? Uh-huh. Yeah, Dana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, everybody agreed. I got 60 likes, which is extraordinary around here. And 73 votes. That's extraordinary. I'm usually censored like mad, so I probably got 300 votes tonight. It's only like one in every every four that really go through. <laughs> but we did cover a lot of amazing stories tonight. All of them were full of just propaganda, just stuffed, stuffed full of propaganda. I have a bunch of scoundrels. And the poll is still going strong, 74 votes. Is the degenerate, spineless, soulless, pro-nuclear community evil and reckless? Yeah, that sounds about right, Dana. That's that's a great poll tonight. 74 votes, 99% of the people said, yeah, they're evil and reckless. And, of course, everybody knows I'm being polite, right? Well, there we go. We made it through the show. I haven't kept an eye on the Geiger counter tonight to see what that was screaming at me, but... Good night, everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Unfortunately, I got another show ready to go. I think tomorrow night we're going to be covering the... Constipated Party. Um... <laughs> Conference of Parties 27 tomorrow night. And uh, I've, I've been working on that today. So good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Hugs for everybody. I'm going to read the comments later tonight. Because that usually calms me down, right? Because it takes hours for me to finally get my brain to start like, if you took the temperature of my brain at the end of these shows, I'm sure it's got to be heated up. Ugh. I'll read the comments later. I'll catch up to what everybody had to say. I'll shout out hugs for everybody tonight. Have a great night. And don't be worked up like me. It's not healthy for you. I know it's impossible for everybody. Oh yeah, well let's call let's close the poll down before we call it a night. Is the degenerate, disgusting, scumbag nuclear community evil and reckless? At 74 amazing votes. 99% of the people said yeah, they're degenerate, evil, and reckless, Dana. They got 62 likes tonight. We got a great little crowd tonight, by the looks of it. Gotta like that.
Seems we made it this far without wrecking everything. Let's call it a night. Let's see everybody tomorrow night. I got a doozy for everybody tomorrow night. We're going to do the Constipated Party 27. Get after dear craziness. I noticed her being very cautious about mentioning the word nuclear, which surprised me because I know nuclear is a huge influence this year. There's a lot of repression going on in Egypt as we speak. Activists are being treated like sheeple. We'll cover it all tomorrow night and then some, I'm sure. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Take care, folks. If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Costs very little and hopefully goes a long way. <laughs>